the world's strongest beer. What more can I say? So what is it going to be like? It's Beer O'Clock. And from Brewdog and Shosh Brow Brewery in a collaboration, we have a bottle of their strength in numbers coming in at 57.8% ABV. Yes, you've heard it correctly. 57.8% ABV. This here is the strongest beer in the world. Now, before any of you, let's get a myth out of the way here, right? Before any of you comment and say, no, it's not. Snake Venom is the strongest beer in the world. Well, sorry, Snake Venom is not the strongest beer in the world. Snake Venom is a beer that is basically a brewed beer. So it could even, could even be a bloody Carlin, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And they add, after it's brewed, they add distilled um, alcohol to it to take it up to whatever, 70% or whatever it's meant to be. Um, that's not brewing a beer. Like I said, you know, a snake venom could be could be carling it for all we concerned, right? And all they've done is they've stuck distilled alcohol in it. This is actually brewed. Now, Shawshbrow, they are famous for brewing strong beers. They first started in 1996. When in, in 96, beer consumption was actually falling. And they decided to build a small brewery, but brew fine beers. All to um, the Reinheitsgebot, you know, um, to the German standards. And what they, s they start brewing is what was called an Eisbock. Or an Eisbock. And... What an ice bock is, basically, they brew the beer, okay, and and then they start to freeze it, and it forms ice, and they keep scooping these blocks of ice, and that really concentrates the beer down, hence why they can get these high ABVs. So you're you're basically all you're doing is you're, it's a bit like um when you do a sauce in cooking and you concentrate it down to concentrate the flavors. Well, what they're doing here is that is they're, 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 they're freezing it, removing the ice, which is the water in the beers um, turning to ice because alcohol doesn't freeze. And they're taking the ice away, taking the ice away, taking the ice away, and just basically concentrating it down. So that's um, a sort of, a simple way of understanding how they get a beer to this ABV. Now, about a decade ago, Brewdog being Brewdog, like they always are, they want to be the innovators and stuff. They ended up entered into a bit of a race with uh, with with Shawshbrow over Shawshbrow had the strongest beer in the world. And as a matter of fact, if you go on the Shawshbrow website, you actually see little labels on their bottles. Actually, it says, um, I'll just bring it up. It actually just says the world's the world's strongest beers like, on their labels. So they're proud of this fact, Shawshbrow. Along come Brewdog, and they produce one stronger than what Shawshbrow have, 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 have brewed. So Shawshbrow hit back, then Brewdog hit back, Shawshbrow hit back, and it gets up to... 57% ABV, um, which is, uh, I've got the name of it, what, what Shawshbrow um, produced. They produced one at, uh, say, 57% um, percent ABV, and it was the world record. I, I think it's called the, the Basis um, Assortment, and it, it, it has the 50, 57% basically. So what Brewdog have done is 
a little bit clever. They've obviously approached the German brewery and said, "Hey, let's 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 both have this record. Let's both share this record. Let's see how strong we can make a beer, and let's share this record and no, so no one can beat it." So obviously they, I think they're probably maxed out at fifty-seven point eight percent. I would say I don't think you could you could probably brew one um, higher than this. So this is going to be around for a long time as the strongest beer. Now, an interesting thing about this beer is Brewdog have actually um, donated one of their own beers to this collaboration. And it's... Um, they're, they're, they had a beer um, called a Death or Glory, an ice-distilled Belgium golden ale that's been sitting in whiskey casks for 10 years. So that's what... They've donated to the mix, and obviously Shores Brow have donated their side of the mix, and they've brewed it, and this is this is the result. This is the result. This is, like I say, um, Brewdog and Shores Brow have had sex, and this is the child they've produced. That's the easiest way to sort of uh, describe it. Now, not only is this going to be the world's strongest beer reviewed on the channel, it's possibly going to be the most expensive beer per volume because this bottle costs twenty eight ninety nine a bottle. Yes, you heard it correctly. This was twenty eight ninety nine. Now you might say, "Oh, he's got two. Yes, I have bought two because I knew they'd sell out, and they have sold out. As we're time we're speaking now, they have sold out of this." It's a 40 milliliter bottle. They've sold out. I bought two because I know that this is going to be a good investment. This one bottle here is my investment bottle. That I'm going to age this, hold on to it. That is possibly going to double, treble, quadruple in price. Um, nice little thing to have sitting away, hidden away for a rainy day. So without further ado, let's crack open this bottle and let's give it a review. Now, I'm actually going to review it in a in my one of my whiskey tasting glasses, my whiskey glasses with the lid on to stop the alcohol evaporating. Okay, and the only reason I've got this little whiskey glass is because Brewdog's Death and Glory has been sitting in whiskey casks for ten years. It's a little tiny bottle. Let's get it into that glass. Look at this little flip top on there with the wax around it. Let's see if we can flip this off. Let's, let's open it up. Oh, <laughs> didn't get much of a pop, did we? So let's, um, there we go. We've broken the seal. Let's pour this in this little glass. I'm going to pour it aggressively. I might as well. I want to get every last drop. Look at that. One of them droplets is worth about 50 pence, isn't it? Don't want to waste any. Right. So there it is in the glass. Um, it's a beautiful... It's a little bit of red in there. Oh, it's a beautiful sort of dark oak coloured beer a little bit of readiness there a little bit of ruby it absolutely looks fantastic can you see the lacing of the alcohol I'll bring that up close where I swill it round like so so, so the, the alcohol lacing on the sides there Right, let's let's get get an aroma. Oh, it, it smells boozy. Oh. It smells whiskey like. It really does. And treacle.
you get too close to this and give it a whiff, it it it, it, it burns it burns your nostril hairs. Now my nose is getting accustomed to it. It really does smell nice. Very um, treacle. It takes you back to days of having treacle pudding. You remember that? Treacle pudding. Treacle pudding, a little bit of booziness there, a little bit of booziness. Now, I actually, I actually recommend that you serve this up at you know, about five degrees, which I've done. It's going to warm up quite quickly in this glass. I'm swilling it all the time. I just can't believe the lacing, the lacing of the alcohol, it goes up the side of the glass. And it's, it's, this is quite a, it might look thin, but when you see that alcohol lacing up the side of the glass, it's quite a, quite a thick beer. We're going to have to dive in and give this a try in a second. I don't want to because I'm a little bit scared of what it's going to be like. Um, I want to take a mouthful of this and like it. I just hope I'm not going to take a mouthful of this and hate it. Yeah, the, the smell is beautiful. I get some, I even get some cigar notes from it. Bearing in mind, you know, I used to smoke a lot of fine cigars. What, what, what would I kill for now to have a well I've got some indoors but I won't do it to light up a cohiba now a nice big cohiba now and to take to have a few big lugs on the cohiba to, to then take a sip of this but I can't I daren't do it um, so without further ado this is all the moment you've been waiting for let's give this bad boy a try cheers Oh my word. The first thing it done, as soon as it touched my tongue, it fizzed away on my tongue. I have such a pleasant mouthfeel. It's like I've just got a Spoon full of treacle and stuck it in my mouth. Whoa, this is amazing. This is amazing. I just took a little tiny sip. I don't think you can take a mouthful of this beer. No way could you take a mouthful of this beer. This is a little sip at a time job. And that first sip was out of this world, out of this world. Let's go in for another one. There's a warmth when it initially hits your tongue. But that disperses quite quick. And then you've just got this, this really, really pleasant aftertaste. It is unreal. 
This is something really, really special. I'm so glad I've managed to get hold of a bottle of this. It is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I love it. I love it. It just warms me up with joy. It really does. This is an extra special beer. And it's an extra special moment as well this weekend because um, I can't be over there. It's actually the anniversary of the Battle of Arnhem, Operation Market Garden, which I had obviously a relative uh, um, got killed in, and my grandfather fought in it. And to sit here now and have this fantastic beer, um, I'm going to raise a glass to. Uh, I'm going to raise a glass now to uh, William Lieutenant William Burgess, who sadly died in the battle. Um, a member of the 10th Battalion of the Parachute Regiment. I'm going to raise a glass to my father, who sadly passed away in December. Who'd have thought we'd be sitting here now and I'd be drinking the strongest beer in the world? And I don't think this is going to be surpassed. Those of you who missed out on a bottle of this, you're going to be kicking yourselves. You're going to be kicking yourselves. This, this is just awesome. Um, this is why I like drinking beer. I'm going to be honest with you. This this is going to take me well over an hour to drink this. An hour, an hour and a half to drink this. There's no way you can drink this fast. There's no way you could just... You, there's no way anyone looking at it thinking, oh, it's just a shot, just knock it back. Forget it. You would not knock this back. And I'm a drinker, as you know. I can drink, I can handle my beer. I could never knock this back as a shot. This is this is a, this is something which you, you sit back, you sip, you enjoy. The flavours are just the second to none. They really, really are second to none, the flavours of this beer. I'm taking a sip of this beer and I'm having to hold it in my mouth because what it's doing to my taste buds is unbelievable. The roof of my mouth, my tongue, my senses. It's unbelievable. This beer is a work of art. It seriously is a work of art.
There are people that if they have a sip of this are going to hate it. They are going to hate it with a passion. But if those that hate this with a passion, you don't understand beer. You don't understand the process of, of, of brewing fine beer. This is a connoisseur's beer. As you know, I'm very into my barrel-aged beers, my expensive Belgian barrel-aged ales, my barrel-aged stouts. Um, so I appreciate something like this. Now, I don't know if my, my good friend Brian managed to get a bottle of this off a of brew dog, because I know he likes his barrel-aged stuff, and he likes to um, keep a few beers and um, have a few for investments, that sort of thing. So I don't know whether Brian got... I did send him a link, and that, I don't know whether Brian managed to get one, or whether he bothered to get one. But Brian, if, if, if you didn't get one, you're missing out, really, because this, this, is, this is a beer... This is a beer that you sh that people you should have tried before you died. Because I don't think you're ever going to get the chance to try anything like this again. Um, not that it's the strongest beer in the world. You could probably go on to Shaw, Sprout and get hold of something similar, an Eisbock. Um, but I don't think you're going to get this 57.8% ever again. I think this is, this is, they've maxed out. And that's it. So look. If you can manage to get hold of a bottle of this, well done, and I hope you enjoy it as much as what I'm enjoying it. If you didn't get hold of a bottle, I hope you enjoyed this review, and it sort of opened your eyes into this style of beer, and the strength of this beer, and how it sort of tastes, and the history. So, without further ado, look, leave me a comment below, and let me know what you think. Give us a big thumbs up if you like the review. Hit that little bell, get notified every time I bring out a new one. And of course, subscribe to the channel. And like I always say, beer is the answer, but I cannot remember the question. Thank you for watching. Good night. TT says, never play with matches, fireworks, and always drink responsibly.